What time is it on God's time clock? How close are we to the rapture and the tribulation? These events that we're going to study tonight could happen in just a few months. Who's going to stand for Israel? When will the Old Testament saints be resurrected from the dead? We're going to talk about all of this and more. And I want to thank you for joining us. Hit the subscribe button if you hadn't. Partner with us. Pray for us. We're going to have a great time tonight. We're continuing our study in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. Grab your Bibles and grab a pencil and pen and please take notes. Call a friend. We're going to study this continuation of the book of Daniel. We've already had six messages in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2, the images and this statue described what they were all about. The ten toes and the stone. We've already discussed Daniel chapter 7 and the Antichrist, this little horn. We've looked at Daniel chapter 9, this tremendous prophetic picture of the end time scenario in the 69th week and the 70th week. And then we have looked at Daniel chapter 11, uh, the Antichrist, rise and fall. Now we've come to Daniel chapter 12. These three prophetic events that are on the horizon, and we're going to dive into the Word just now as we study this together. Daniel's final word to Israel, everlasting life or everlasting death. And we're going to... Consider when are the Old Testament saints resurrected from the dead. We're going to look at that and study that together. So find the book of Daniel, and you're well aware that Daniel is a prophet of God. Not one single negative comment mentioned about Daniel in the book of Daniel. And he's in Babylon at the time of his writing. Primarily the focus is to the Jewish people, and yet Daniel not only sees the past, but the present, and even the future. So, number one, what time is it on God's time clock? We're going to look at Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. By the way, you do know Daniel 12 comes right along with Daniel 11. And if you look back in Daniel 11, we studied verses 36 through 45, mainly the Antichrist to be a military man of power and political power and economical power and ecclesiastical power and even a man of power of prophetical power and yet uh, we see how the Lord is unfolding in Daniel chapter 12. The second uh, unanswered question that perhaps is just on the horizon is number two. Who will stand for Israel? Who will stand for God's people? in this last day, and in the times that are yet to come. I'm praying for the peace of Jerusalem, and I know that you're concerned about our nation's leadership and the stand that we take to support Israel militarily, politically, more importantly, spiritually. Now, we realize that many of the Jews have not turned to their Messiah, and yet some have, and God's promises and covenants are still uh, going to be fulfilled in the future. There's a third question we'll address tonight, and it's this. When and where will the Old Testament saints be resurrected from the dead? So, let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. Again, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. At that time shall Michael stand up. Now, Michael is a... <laughs> He's a bad archangel. I mean, not bad as in bad, but I mean, he's one of the most powerful archangels we're introduced to in the Bible. Evidently, God dispatches this archangel, Michael, as a protector of Israel. We're introduced to Gabriel. Many identify him also as an archangel, as a spokesman. And we can see uh, glimpses of that as well. But Michael the archangel stands up. The great prince, by the way, Michael is mentioned in Daniel chapter 10, before you get to Daniel chapter 12, and intervening as Daniel prays and the prince of Persia withstands him. Michael's also mentioned in the book of Jude, where he did not dispute over the body of Moses, but said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Now listen, if Michael's that powerful and he does not try to rebuke the devil, how can you and me 
rebuke the devil. No, in the name of Jesus, we have victory in him because he's defeated the enemy. Stripped and spoiled principalities and powers and made a public open display of them, triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2, verse 14 and 15. But Michael stands up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there should be a time of trouble. This word trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, references the time of Jacob's trouble. The word trouble in the Septuagint is translated thalipsis, which means a time of pressure. Now, let's put it together. Michael stands up. And he's speaking to the children of thy people. That would be the Jews. And there should be a time of trouble. What's he talking about? We'll get the chronological time frame in just a moment. Such as never was since there was a nation, even that same time. And at that time, thy people, the Jews, shall be delivered. Every one of them shall be found written in the book. We'll talk about this book and what it means and who is written in it and how do we know who's written in it and who is not written in it. Okay. So, let's talk now for a moment about the time frame of these events. At that time, at that time. Now, the phrase where Daniel says, at that time, goes back to the time of Daniel chapter 11. The Antichrist, the unfolding, remember these five personalities, the last of which is the Antichrist. At that time, this is referring to the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. The time that God has the focus on the Jewish people in the tribulation. The tribulation, keep in mind, was not meant for the church. The word ecclesia is not mentioned in the Revelation chapter 6 through 18. Not at all, not one time. However, it's mentioned 25 times in the book of Revelation. And yet Israel is mentioned 30 times, 85% of the time it's during the tribulation. Why? Because that's God's focus for the tribulation. And if that's not enough to convince you, just go back to Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. He shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he's referring to the Antichrist. He'll break that covenant that, uh, in the midst of the uh, covenant and the midst of that uh, seven weeks, which will be three and a half years into that seven years. So we derive this tribulation seven years from the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel is written to the Jews. So I conclude and submit to you that the tribulation was not meant for the church. That's a misunderstanding of the purpose of the tribulation. The evangelization of the Jews. The times of the Gentiles to be fulfilled. And that would be uh, the time of the Gentiles ruling over the Temple Mount and in Jerusalem. as already starting in Daniel chapter 2. Interesting to note. And then that will be fulfilled at the end of the tribulation. And then the overthrow of Satan will also be a purpose of the tribulation in addition to preparing God's people for the implementation, the inauguration of the millennial kingdom. So at that time, Daniel refers to at that time, there'll be a time of uh, Jacob's trouble, a tribulation time. Shall this Michael stand up for the people? And I want to uh, ask you what time do you think it is now? Not in the time of, by the way, this could only happen in just a few months after the rapture of the church. I think it's time to wake up, don't you? Paul put it this way. It's high time to wake out of sleep to the church of Rome and to us today. Chapter 13, verse 11 following. Knowing the time, it is high time to wake out of sleep. For our salvation is nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh fulfill the lust thereof. Don't you believe it's time to wake up in this pluralistic, secularistic, humanistic society? I think it's time to wake up. I think God's calling the church to wake up, Christians to wake up. We've left our first love. Wake up. It's time to wake up in a sleepy world. It's time to look up in a world that's looking down because our redemption draws nigh. It's time to dress up in a world that uh, needs to dress up, and it's a time to stand up when the world is falling down. And speaking of time, there's a time to be born, a time to die. Where are you at in that time? There's a dash between the day of your birth and the day of your death. What are you going to make of that dash? Don't you want to fulfill God's purpose and plan? He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for me. I just preached a 52-year-old man's funeral just the other day. I'm glad that he had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Three weeks ago today, or really about three weeks ago, a little over three weeks ago, he was at the lake fishing. No idea that he would go out in eternity. He and I talked for an hour or so at a time talking about his eternal destiny. And so 
it's a time to be born, a time to die. So what time is it? Paul says in the book of Ephesians 5, 16, we'll redeem the time, the days are evil. And be not unwise, understand that the will of the Lord is. So, number one, what time is it on God's time clock? It's later than it's ever been. Do you agree with that? And it's time to witness. It's time to share the good news. It's time to build up the body of Christ. It's time to bear one another's burdens. It's time to uh, not argue and criticize and throw rocks and nitpick and fault find like the Pharisees. Rather, it's time to serve the Lord because one day we'll stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ and have to give an account of our life, how we've lived it here below. But let every one of us appear before the judgment seat of Christ we may receive in our body what we've done, whether it be good or bad. And there will be rewards. I'm telling you, suffering now, affliction now, hardship now, and troubles now, but it'll be worth it all, and it pales in comparison to the glory and the eternal bliss and rewards we'll get when we get to heaven. That's the promise of the Word of God. So what time is it? We know what time it is. Secondly, consider with me for a moment the second unfulfilled question that yet is to be fulfilled in Daniel's prophecy, Daniel chapter 12. Who will stand up for God's people? Tell me, are you standing these days? Are you falling down or standing up? Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? I like that. Ezekiel said this, I sought for a man that would stand in the gap and make up the hedge, and I could find none. That's in Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's Joshua 24 and 15, I think it is. Are you standing for the truth of God's word? Are you loving sinners but not loving their sin? These days are requiring us to come apart for a while so we can get filled up with Holy Ghost power. Standing for truth. Well, who will stand for God's people? I'm talking about Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And let's consider this. At that time, shall Michael stand up? Notice, Michael's standing up. God dispatches Michael, uh, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there should be a time of trouble such as never was, since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people should be delivered. Every one of them should be found written in the book. This is after the rapture of the church. This is futuristic. But notice Israel became a nation in 1948. Uh, it was a historic fulfillment of Ezekiel's prophecies and God's uh, promises for his going back to their homeland. We call that uh, their going back uh, to their homeland. They were dispersed, as you know, in 70 A.D., but uh, Aliyah is the word I'm looking for. So what about it? What is the time on God's time clock. Who stand up for God's people? You know, I was in a Christian school last week, and we were, had the privilege of speaking to 6th grader through 12th graders, and they gave me two hours. Imagine. No one got up to his restroom, nothing. And I want to say thank you for your prayers and joining as we study the Bible. You notice all we do in our videos, our goal and the message the Lord's placed in the heart is to study the Word of God. We don't incorporate a lot of uh, current events and news and all that. We could go to the news and get all this information and it's hype and it's sensational. I agree. And it piques interest and draws people. But the Lord has instructed uh, us at this point to do a correct uh, biblical exegetical analysis of the Scripture. And so I'm so grateful to God that you're hanging with us and studying with us and sharing it with others. Because if you want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus, if you want to be like men of Issachar, understand the times in which we live, if we want to make a difference now, then it's, it's, we've got to be rooted in the Word of God. And I'm still learning too, and I appreciate your prayers. Who stand up for God's people in these days? i only got news for you. If you're going to stand up for the Lord, you're going to be persecuted. I was at this Christian school. I asked them, I said, how much time do you spend on social media? You know what they said? The average student said, oh, three or four hours, six hours, a day, a day. And so right now, spending a little time, 30 minutes, 25 minutes, approximately they're about 20 minutes to build your faith compared to other you know, entertainment and so forth. So I want to thank you for standing up and for investing in the eternal things of the Lord. And so... When and where will the Old Testament saints who have been raised from the dead, when, when, 
I'm sorry, when will the Old Testament saints who have died be raised from the dead? Notice this is Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Many of them, now he's a continuation from chapter 12, 1, to chapter 12, 2. Men remember what it said, that their name was written in the, lamp, in the book of life. And now we're going to tie in the book of Revelation with the book of Daniel on a chronological time frame. When is he talking about? Uh, what time is it and what's God's message for the Jewish people? Well, let me just stop there and say that the Jews, by and large, Jesus Christ came in the Gospels and he came preaching the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 4, I think it's verse 17 and also verse 19. He said, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. But by and large, the Jews rejected the kingdom. They rejected the king. And that's why it's important when he comes again in the second coming, not the rapture. The rapture he comes as the bridegroom for us, the bride, the church. But when he comes in the second coming after the tribulation, he comes as the king. Why? Because the Jews, by and large, rejected him as the king. Consequently, his kingdom has been postponed. If you read Matthew 21, 43, we'll not look at it now, but you'd read that Jesus said, the kingdom is taken from you and given to another nation. The word nation there in Matthew 21, 43 is the word ethnos. And you can tie in the, the connect the dots to 1 Peter 2, 9, where Peter said concerning the church, the church had been birthed after Matthew's gospel. Jesus is speaking to the Jews primarily in Matthew's gospel. And yet Peter says, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. And this was a fulfillment, partial fulfillment of Jesus reject, being rejected by the Jews, but postponing his kingdom temporarily and then bring it to another nation, meaning ethnos, the Gentiles, the church, and which is both comprised of Jews and Gentiles. However, that does not, hear me now, that does not negate or nullify his unconditional covenants with Abraham, chapter 12 of Genesis to chapter 15, that means the Lord is going to give them their land that he promised them. They've only possessed 10% of it as of yet. The uh, Davidic covenant, which is in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 14 through 16, David, uh, his seed, his throne, his name should be forever. And then his kingdom as well, ruling and reigning with our Lord Jesus. But the third unconditional covenant is the land covenant in Deuteronomy 30 and then the new covenant in Jeremiah 31. Now, I know we derive benefits from the New Covenant, but primarily, if you'll see in Jeremiah 31, it's written to the Jews, the house of Israel, not the church. Jeremiah is referring to the Jewish people. And then the Lord said in Jeremiah 31, he said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, if I can notify my covenants with the Jewish people, the sun and the moon won't shine. In other words, he's got an unconditional uh, olam forever. That's the Hebrew word. So, Coming back to our thought about when was this going to take place? Many of them that sleep in the dust. He's, Daniel's talking to the Jews. Sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. That is, they'll be resurrected. Some of them to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Judgment. When's this going to take place? Has it already taken place? We need to clarify the Bible references to resurrections. There's at least four resurrections mentioned in the Bible. And let's talk about those. One, Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead as he said he would. He predicted he would die, and he predicted he would rise again. Matthew chapter 28 records that. Mark chapter 16, Luke 24, and then John chapter 20. I find it interesting that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20, Paul says, but Christ now being the first fruits has risen from the dead and have come the first fruits of them that slept. He's talking about sleeping as Comeo, the cemetery, the body goes back to the dust. And yet, Jesus being the first fruits. The word is a parquet, first fruits, which means the first one to rise from the dead, never to die again. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that lives and believes in me shall never die. So he said, behold, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. Hold the keys to death and hell. That's John chapter 11, verse 25, also Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. So when is this going to take place? These Old Testament saints resurrected. These saints will be resurrected at the beginning of the millennial reign, the saints, the Old Testament saints. Because in Daniel chapter 11, you'll notice that Daniel refers to the end time. 
He said, and at that time, meaning the time of the Antichrist meeting his demise, the time of Jacob's trouble, a time of persecution and intensifying, getting ready for Christ to come again. And thus, many of the Jews will turn to the Messiah and be saved during this time. Uh, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10 says that they'll look upon him whom they pierced and mourn. Oh my, do you know somebody that needs to be saved, to need to know Jesus Christ in a personal way, not religion? I talked with a 12-year-old young man at this Christian school. He came up to me and said, I'm not saved. He said, I used to come to church there. I hadn't seen him in years and years. I asked him, I said, are you ready? He said, uh, not quite. I talked with another young man last night, uh, 16 years old, that's uh, on the verge. And there's a number of people that, uh, for example, I was at a, this same home-going service, and I saw a young man, 28 years old, and I asked him, was he a Christian? Very nice young man. He said, no, I've got my own views. And we talked just for a little while, but I could tell he didn't want to talk. I'm concerned about those who aren't ready to meet God. It's prepare to meet thy God. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. There's going to be a judgment to come. And speaking of that, these saints in the Old Testament in Daniel's prophecy are going to be resurrected. Many of them that sleep in the dust shall awake some to everlasting life. Have you ever thought about it? Those who died in the Old Testament, what would happen to them? They go to a place called Sheol. It's the grave. But it's not the place of heaven as in Jesus taking, saying today, you should be in paradise, speaking to the thief on the cross. After Jesus died, he arose and ascended in high and led captivity, those that were in captivity, and went into heaven. And many put that at this point as to when these will be resurrected. But I think if you look at the text more carefully, my personal opinion is these will be resurrected at the millennial reign, but at the end of the tribulation rather than when Christ died, because, again, the tribulation and this chronological time frame in Daniel 12 seems to fit uh, the description uh, more accurately. And so these that will be resurrected at the beginning of the millennium, 1,000-year reign, after Christ comes again, we'll come back with him after the judgment seat of Christ, the marriage of the Lamb and the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then Jesus comes to fight the battle of Armageddon, and then many Gentiles and Jews, remember 144,000 will come, as well as many other Jews who will be supernaturally sealed and will be saved during the tribulation. They'll look to the Messiah. They'll come into the millennial reign. Consequently, uh, the saints will be resurrected, the Old Testament saints at the beginning, along with those martyred tribulation saints. Now, just because you read the word saints in the... Uh, the New Testament and in the book of Revelation doesn't mean they're the church saints, they're tribulation saints. There'll be some saved, some debate as to only those who've not heard the gospel. Gentiles will be saved during that time. That's a, another message for another time. But anyway, this 1,000 year reign, that will be the beginning. And then notice these who come to shame and everlasting contempt will be raised at the end of the millennium. And this is referred to as the great white throne judgment. John said this. He said, I saw a great white throne. He that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was no place found in them. And the dead, small and great, stood before God. And the books were open. Remember I told you about a book mentioned in Daniel's prophecy? He says, ever since there was a nation that the time thy people should be delivered, every one of them that was found written in the book, the books were open. Another book was open. John sees this in Revelation 20. Same book he's talking about. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And this is the second death. And whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. It's called the great white throne judgment. And that's what uh, Daniel sees. This will take place at the end of the millennium. Remember, there's a resurrection here, but the resurrection of the lost and believers will be at the end of the millennium. You know God keeps record books. Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? When the roll is called up yonder, will you be there? I just went to a motel just the other night, and I called ahead of time. And Anyway, I showed up there, and I saw that they were full and turning many away. And I went to the front desk, and they said, Sir, do you have a reservation? I said, yes, sir. He said, what's your name? 
I said, Randy Reese. And he said, hold on a minute. He looked in his book. He said, you have made a prior reservation. There's a room waiting for you. But if I hadn't made a prior reservation, I would have faced a separation. And so it is when you die. You've got to make a prior reservation or you'll face the final separation. And I'm asking you, have you made that prior reservation? Have you said to Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. Forgive me my sin. I believe you died on the cross to pay a price. I could not pay a debt you didn't owe. A debt I owe. And I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry I've left you out of my life. Take control. I want to receive you right now as my Lord and Savior. Will you do that right now? I tell you what, eternity is too long to be wrong. It's too long to be wrong. And there is a place called the Lake of Fire. And so I want to close right now and pray for you that, to know what time it is. Do you know what time it is? It's a late hour. What we do for the Lord, we need to do it now. And will you put somebody on your heart? Let God put somebody on your heart right now that you know is not a Christian. They're not saved. Before it's too late now, will you pray for them first, and then will you talk with them? Send them a message. Tell them to see this video. Whatever it takes, tell them about Jesus. Point them to Jesus. And the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but all to come to repentance. That's 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 1 Timothy 2, 4. It's God's will for all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's pray right now for those we know that aren't ready to meet Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your amazing grace, your unconditional love that reached way down when I couldn't reach up high enough. <laughs> you reached down low enough and brought me out of the miry clay. Lord, I thank you for saving my lost soul and forgiving me through your precious blood. We trust you now, Lord, people on our heart that have not made that lifelong decision and put their faith and trust in you. I pray, Father, right now for those and those listening right now, maybe some who are procrastinating, putting off. Oh, God, uh, the clock's ticking. And I pray before it's too late, you'll open their heart. You'll help them to yield to you and surrender and receive you and we ask you now to give us opportunities to go and tell because of your great love and when all said and done we'll give you glory for it bless those listening again we pray thank you jesus we love you and give you glory because you loved us first in jesus name thank you for those that are being saved right now in jesus name father amen amen and amen Thank you for joining us. Again, subscribe if you hadn't. Pray for us, and God bless you and be with you till we meet again.